One of my favorite targets is now high up in the summer sky. It is the North America Nebula. But to get the nebula, you need a certain wide field of view to capture the whole thing. As a matter of fact, I wanted to capture it along with the Pelican Nebula right next to it. So I had to set up my special telescope for the wide field view and put a reducer on it to make the field even wider. And I wanted to see what this nebula would look like through the different filters. So let's take a look. Meanwhile, behind me, these are moon flowers. Stick around to the end. I'm going to show you an animation of these things blooming. And then when they open, they open fast. Welcome to Heavenly Backyard Astronomy. This is the telescope that I've been using to capture the North American Nebula. It is the Orion ED80T. I got this telescope about five years ago, and I just love it. It's not so big, but boy, it's strong, and it has a great field of view. Now, in its native state, the focal ratio is f.6. However, with the focal reducer on there, 0.8x, it brings the uh, focal ratio down to 4.8. In other words, uh, a focal length of 480 millimeters down to 400 millimeters. And with that, I get a great field of view, a nice wide field of view, and I'm able to pick up the two nebulae side by side up in the sky. So let's take a look at some of these filters that I'm using. Okay, let's take a look at some of the equipment here. First of all, these are the cameras that I have been using. This is the a ZWO ASI 1600 model and uh, I usually cool it down to minus 10 degrees Celsius and there I have the filter wheel it's a one and a quarter inch filters that I use on this filter wheel in itself and the other is the ZWO ASI 071 camera and this is a one shot color camera and again I keep it cooled to minus 10 degrees Celsius now this one I have a filter wheel on it and there I can change the filters very easily. Uh, like for example, this one right now is the uh, uh, UV uh, IR cut filter that I have in there. And uh, the different filters I've been using are, are, are a lot. <laughs> First of all, the um, color filters that I use uh, for the red, green, blue are the uh, uh, astronomic uh, filter set that I have. Uh, not the greatest filters in the world, but they, they do work. I noticed the blue has a tendency to uh, produce a lot of halos around the stars, um, but the red and the green work pretty well. And uh, uh, for the um, narrow band, I have one here, a, the, uh, the S2 filter is the ATIC S2 filter. I think it's a six nanometer uh, filter. With the O3, I have the batter uh, four nanometer filter. It's really, really good. It's, it brings in the uh, blue nicely. And for the hydrogen alpha, I have a 3,5 uh, nanometer filter here from Batter, and uh, uh, it really helps with the, the red colors. And of course, the, uh, the uh, sulfur 2 is in the high end of the red. Uh, the upper limit to the red, where the HA is in the uh, middle and low end of the red, moving more toward the orange and the yellow. Not so much yellow, but in, the, in that direction. And of course, the uh, the O3 brings in the, uh, the end of the green into the blue light uh, throughout the spectrum. Now, with the uh, one-shot color camera narrowband filters, well, first of all, this is a broadband filter, the Batter uh, UHC Ultra High Contrast uh, filter, and that brings in just about all the light between the red all the way down into the blue. A couple of filter areas, uh, you can see the graph there below me, uh, it, it allows most the bee, uh, bee out there buzzing my head. Uh, it, it filters out most of the uh, center portion of the uh, yellow lights. But anyway, uh, that's that one. Then we have the uh, Altair Astro Quad Band one shot color camera filter. And uh, this uh, is very similar to the Optolong uh, filter. And it, it, it brings in the, uh, the reddish lights, basically the hydrogen alpha, and then skips all the way over to the oxygen three uh, uh, level of a uh, bandwidth of the light and uh, allows a lot of that 
dark green into the, the blue color of the light. The Optolong L Enhance filter. This one um, is doing a really good job. Uh, I know a lot of people have the L Extreme filter, but I'm using the L Enhance filter because it has a little bit more of the H beta, which is in the beyond the oxygen three level. It is in the middle to darker blue color lights uh, uh, that's available. So um, I think the L Extreme filtered that out where the L uh, Enhance allows it through. So they're both great filters, but I really like this filter here, the Optolong um, uh, L Enhance. So the, 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 the Altair band, Altair uh, quad band is not too bad either. That's a pretty good filter. The, these broadband filters are really helping things out a lot in uh, filtering out the light pollution that's up in our skies. And of course, as we all know, light pollution is not going to get any better. It's only going to get worse. So these filters are very important. Also, with the uh, narrow band filters and even some of the, uh, uh, well, the Optolong and the uh, Altair Astro filters helps during the uh, bright moon. Filters out a lot of that uh, stray moonlight that comes in as long as you're not shooting right next to the moon. But, and of course, the broadband uh, filters um, allow all the light in, while the narrow band filters uh, filter out a lot of that light pollution in between the red all the way down to the middle portion of the green. So let's take a look at Stellarium, see just where the North American Nebula is right now. So let's take a look here in Stellarium and to find where the North America Nebula and the Pelican Nebula are located. It's over here in part of the Milky Way. Now this is around um, one o'clock in the morning in late July and it's nearly high overhead, high up in the northern sky. And if I put on some of the uh, constellation markers, there you can see it uh, just off to the uh, uh, east of the uh, Cygnus of Swan over here. Lots of uh, uh, nebulosity over in this region here and uh, you have the crescent nebula you got the uh, eagle nebula which i'm making a video on that as well and you also have the um, uh, lagoon nebula i mean all these different nebulas in the trifid nebula uh, lots of activity over in this region here of the milky way but i'm more concerned about our area here the um, north america nebula and uh, it's not showing up very strongly in Stellarium uh, like some of the other uh, nebulosity does show, but there it is right in that area. Uh, you have the North American Nebula over here and the Pelican Nebula uh, right next to it. So let's take a look and see at some of the different filters and how they show up. And I tried to use at least two to three hours worth of data per each filter. So let's take a look. All right, so let's take a look at some of the images that I came up with. First of all, the RGB, uh, red, green, blue filter uh, combination. And uh, let's take a look here. There's the red, as you can expect, a lot of uh, red in the color. There's the pelican right there, and there's the North American nebula, the Gulf of Mexico, the uh, Mexico itself, and uh, almost, almost Great Lakes Bay, Hudson Bay, anyway. Um, that's the red. The green, not so much in the green and not so much in the blue. And the combination um, wasn't the greatest. A lot of red in this image right here. It's not my favorite. When I pushed it through Photoshop, I still couldn't come out with much. And it was almost embarrassing to even show that. So I'm just going to pop it right back off again. So let's get out of these and uh, let's look at some of the other filters. This was just with the little one and a quarter inch filter wheel. Now going with the two inch filters, the first one I used was the ultra high contrast filter. And this is what I got here. Um, still not the greatest image in the world. I'm not very satisfied with it. You can also see these big old halos around the brighter stars in here. So yeah, the UHF filter, it, it does okay, um, but it's not perfect by by any means so let's take a look at the um, uh, Altair Astro quad band filter this one came out pretty good I mean yeah got to look at that that looks pretty good uh, you can definitely see the pelican still have these little halos though around these brighter stars it's not as bad as it was over here uh, with the UHF I mean UHC uh, you have the uh, these these halos though around it so uh, and then I got carried away 
again that's a little strong i think don't you think uh but uh again i don't want to show that that's embarrassing so um let's go back let's go over to the l enhanced uh picture right now and uh, this was the l enhanced filter now that looked pretty good this is the optolong um it did a pretty good job i mean kind of look the, the, the halos are a little bit there but not near as much as the other two uh the halos were you know quite strong there but the uh optolong l enhanced filter uh was pretty um uh, pretty good pretty good what do you think uh and and you want to see the overdone one <laughs> that's a little bit much don't you think <laughs> it's on fire <laughs> okay um uh, having fun with um photoshop okay what's this last one? Oh, uh, i did try to get a uh, sho and i ran short on the um uh, collection of the data particularly the hydrogen alpha data uh, I, I'm working on that uh, for future perhaps but this is what I have so far um, yeah, it's not so bad I mean it shows the Cygnus wall really cool and the head of the pelican uh, pretty good and its wings uh, and the North American nebula as well but um, I need to get more HA data on this one this has only got about you know maybe an hour 30 minutes worth of data in it so uh, I'm not all that impressed with it but the, you know this um, uh, L enhance filter was pretty good so okay well there you have it uh, which one do you like the best you know, I'm kind of leaning on the Optolong L enhance filter I mean it, it really came out nice a very little halo uh, there was some bit of a halo around those bright stars but not as much as some of the other filters anyway oh and don't forget stick around to the very end watch those moonflowers bloom they're kind of neat uh, as they open up and they're, they're the color of the moon by the way the moon is now coming up in the uh, uh, western sky uh, throughout the evening getting higher and higher now as it's waxing so we'll have to keep that in mind uh, start using those uh, filters uh, particularly, particularly the narrowband filter. Speaking of narrowband filters, uh, another project I'm working on right now uh, is the Eagle Nebula and the Andromeda Galaxy. Now, I've been working with two different rigs. This telescope here, the ED80, and also the Orion Eon 130mm scope. Uh, this one here I'm using to capture the uh, uh, Andromeda Nebula. It gets the whole nebula within the field of view. And the other one, the uh, Eon, I'm working on the Eagle Nebula in narrowband. And I'm looking at the results, and I think you're going to like that video coming up shortly, so stick around. Anyway, you know, if you like this kind of content, you know, feel free to subscribe to my channel and uh, you know, hit the like button. It helps with the, that, uh, what do you call it, that uh, uh, algorithm they use to uh, push videos to other people. And also, you know, if you want to join the channel, you know, it wouldn't hurt my feeling. You don't have to, or you don't have to contribute uh, to help fund the uh, cost for these filters. Anyway, uh, uh, the heavens are just, you know, coming alive now with all this nebulosity uh, in the Sagittarius arm of the Milky Way. And uh, all of this is coming up in a sky near you. So unless you need rain, clear skies, everyone. Now I'm going to look at the moonflowers. <laughs>